Hi guys. This lace tutorial is brought to you by the letters H for this shit is hard and H for I hate lace and uh, yeah, but you know what? You guys wanted it. My students are always asking about it and so I know it's something you guys want to learn so it is my job to suck it up and teach it to you guys. Don't ever say I never did anything for y'all. I don't hate lace. I think lace is very pretty. But uh, I don't like rendering lace. My best friend is back there behind the camera. <laughs> he just called me a lacist. <laughs> One of the reasons why I don't like rendering lace is because it's art. But as I say in my classes all the time, it's hard because it's hard and not because there's anything wrong with you. This stuff is hard, you know, the lace is a very complicated rendering and this video is probably going to be eight hours long, whatever. But yeah, so after you watch this tutorial, when you try lace out for the first time, if you nail it in one and it's beautiful, congratulations, but you are the exception and not the rule. If you finish this tutorial and your rendering turns out awful, and you don't even want to show anybody because it's so bad and it doesn't even really look like lace, that's fine. That's totally normal, okay? Hardly anyone gets it on the first try, so it's totally fine. You're just gonna go and practice because we are made of not magic, but practice, right? So it's fine. It's hard, but it's fine. Now, the basic principles for lace are these. Number one, 99.9% .9 of laces are a combination of two things, a floral design and a mesh that connects it together. Number two, there are approximately 600 dozen kinds of lace. I'm not going to teach them all to you today because we don't have time for that, but lace rendering can typically fall into one of two categories, okay? We have, now when I say that, I don't mean that lace construction falls into one of two categories, I mean lace rendering. The first category consists of laces like this, where the whole thing is very sheer. It's a little bit more delicate, and you can see my skin and the separation of my fingers and everything in between because it's sheer all over. The flowers are sheer. The design is sheer. The mesh is sheer. Everything is sheer. Sheer, sheer, sheer. Okay. So in order to render something like this, what you need to do is to combine the principles I taught with print renderings with the principles I taught with sheer renderings. And there you have lace. Okay, go watch those videos. I will wait. Do 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 do. Bum, bum, bum. No, seriously, all joking aside, if you especially if you're a beginner, I highly recommend that you go watch those two videos before you watch the rest of this race let race rendering, lace rendering video. When I'm teaching in my classes, lace comes kind of late in the semester, and I've already taught X, Y, Z number of things leading up to that. And uh, I know what I taught my students already, and I can build on that knowledge, but I have no idea what you guys have watched already. I have no idea what you guys know already. So, you know, I will constantly be saying in my videos, hey, if you don't know this, go watch this one and go watch that one, etc., etc. The second category of lace, is far more opaque so you can see again there is this floral flower and leaf pattern and you have a mesh that connects everything together but unlike the other one these flowers are opaque like behind the white you can't see what color my skin color is and then the mesh each yarn is very fat thick and far space apart so that you're gonna have to render all these bits. Like you're not gonna render every single teeny tiny little itty bitty yarn of the mesh here, unless you were drawing life size. 
But with something like this, you do want to show that you have this connecting mesh that's very wide. I'm going to show you a few more examples. Here's one that falls into the second category. There's all these solid, opaque, white design spaces with wider mesh connecting the floral design. Again, here's another one where the flowers are opaque black. The mesh is kind of in between super fine and, you know, wide enough to render. Like I would still render this mostly as a sheer black with opaque black flowers on top. Here's one that is all sheer, very delicate. I would render the sheer, and then I would take a very delicate medium, like the skinniest micron, a very sharp color pencil to put in these details. Here's another one where it's opaque and you see the individual yarns of the mesh. Here's one where it's very, very sheer. The mesh is very fine. You don't see the individual yarns. And then you have metallic gold lace flowers. So when you're looking at your lace fabric swatch, okay, you are rendering to match your swatch, remember? So pay attention to, of course, the color and the texture, as usual. Pay attention to the mesh whether it's fine and sheer and flimsy and delicate or widely spaced with very thick yarns. Pay attention to your floral design, how big it is, because we're gonna scale that down and do the repeat. Pay attention to whether the flowers themselves are sheer or opaque. Okay, so pay attention to all these things when you are preparing for your lace rendering. I'm going to render three different laces for you today, one in color pencil, one in marker, and one in paint. And as usual, I'm going to emphasize how you can use the media to its best advantage for each kind of lace. So here is this great lace that I used on a collection a while back. And it's far more geometric than most laces out there. And it has these panels where you have this like clear strip in between these sections. And I'm going to render this using color pencil. So here's my dude. I've taken my burnt ochre, Prismacolor, and I've given all the skin that's visible a light layer now i'm going to go in with the same pencil and i'm going to add shadows in the places that will be under the lace so i'm going to define his pecs this is the dark side of his body so i'm going to go in there and color more darkly I'm going to go in where his abs are. There's his belly button. There's that undercut. There's his V. His very low slung jeans. And then his arm here that's hidden by the lace under his clavicle. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to make everything with the exposed skin darker, still using the same pencil. By the way, I'm working on a Bristol, which is my favorite paper for color pencil work. On top of this, I'm going to add the shadows to the exposed skin going in even darker with the same color pencil. So this side of the neck under the jaw. I do have a skin tones video planned for the future. It's gonna be the next installment of my face series. So wait for it. So with the same pencil, you're creating three values of the same color. Your base skin color, that is under the lace, your base skin color that is 
exposed, and then shadow colors for both. I'm just gonna throw in a little indigo here for his jeans because we're gonna, the lace is covering that, so always do that first. But y'all know I have like a whole denim tutorial where I show you guys how to do denim like eight different ways. So if you want to know about denim, go watch that because, you know, I don't like repeating myself. I am using Indigo Blue by Prismacolor. So let's really, really fast, let's review print rendering. Number one, pick the medium and the colors that work best with your fabric. You draw the drapes and the garment according to the weight of the fabric. So kind of light and breezy and drapey. You're going to scale down the pattern using the palm to palm ratio technique. You're going to you're going to apply the eight foot rule where you take your fabric, pin it away from you, step back eight feet and see what you see and draw only the most prominent parts. What's the last rule? First, I'm going to scale out the panels. Now, using the palm to palm, you know, this panel is double the width of my palm. So I'm gonna look at my croaky. This is the width of his palm. And so double that is going to be this width. Now he's a dude, so his hands are bigger. So I'm gonna say it's like a hair smaller, but that really doesn't make that much of a difference when your figures are so small. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna lightly put in my panels. So my panel. You know, there's this empty space, so that's going to be the space. We're going to put in a side seam here. You don't want it to be straight across the body. Okay? That's not how something this delicate and flowy would sit on the body. I'm going to give it an overall kind of sheer black with my color pencil, leaving these sections alone. I'm gonna go in here where I have binding and add nice opaque black. Now these areas, as you know, where the lace is doubled over because there's no skin blocking it, we're going to be more opaque. I'm going to draw these little strings. I'm deliberately making the edges a little bit bumpy because these edges are a little bit bumpy. Yeah, you're gonna sharpen your pencil 800 times, you know, my favorite thing to do ever. And now we're going to draw this design. First, we have this sort of scallop, and then we have the diamonds in the center. I think that a lot of students, they are so used to staring at things like this while they're designing that they are worried that they have to draw every single little hole no. Okay. Remember the eight foot rule. You're going to pull it aside and really kind of like squint your eyes and pull the most important elements, which are the scallops and the diamonds. And these diamonds, they're not 
they're slanted. They're not perfect squares that are at an angle. I'm doing these scallops in a fan because these are coming out in a fan. And you're just gonna keep going until you fill the space. Okay, these little dots, these little diamonds in here that I'm gonna put in. And you're just gonna keep going until you're done. You're gonna do the next row, etc., etc., etc. Do 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 do. Bow 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 bow. One down, two to go, yay! Celebrate with coffee. It's my life motto. The next lace is going to be this beautiful, creamy, beige, floral thing. Here are the markers that I'm gonna be using. I'm going to, I have a lot of skin tones for this one, okay? I have four different skin tones. Just like with your color pencil, you're going to need your exposed skin color and shadow color. And you're going to need a under the sheer shadow, uh, under the sheer skin color and under the sheer shadow color. For my exposed skin, I use Prismacolor's Walnut and a Koi coloring brush pen in raw sienna. And then for my under the lace skin colors, I have two Copics. I have the E23 Hazelnut and the E35 Chamois. For the lace, I'm using Prismacolor Brick Beige. But of course, for you guys, you're gonna use the marker that matches your fabric swatch the best. Subscribers know that with marker paper, I always mark the wrong side and the right side, and I like to draw on the wrong side and render on the right side. So I'm going to do the exposed skin first. Add my shadows, so this side. Now I'm going to color in the skin color that is under the sheer, and I'm going to use the chamois color. I, with Caucasian skin tones or just paler skin tones, I just use a lighter marker color and I use that to color inside. With darker skin tones, I worry about the skin tone overpowering the sheer, especially when I have lighter shears like this. And so I will actually mark her on the reverse so that it just looks duller. Everything looks duller. Okay. 
So I have skin tone that's duller and more faded in the back. I'm gonna punch it up a little bit. I think it needs to be a little bit darker. I'm gonna have a drop shadow under the little slip dress in here. Oh, I forgot this little section and this little section. In my design, I've decided that this little slip dress is going to be white. I'm taking this almond milk color for the shadows because this is like this really beautiful creamy lace and I'm not going to have like a stark white dress with gray shadows underneath. I think that will really ruin the effect. So, you know, my light source is over here. And so this side of the dress is going to be dark. Little girls don't have busts, so she's not going to have an under bust shadow, but she is going to have a dark side of the light shadow. I'm gonna drop in some of this color in the little spaghetti straps. And then I'm going to take my Brick Beige Prisma color. I'm going to color in really lightly, as lightly as possible. Do you see how the skin tone looks very muted because it was done on the reverse? Now, you know, for, if you watch my shears video, that any time fabric is doubled, sheer fabric is doubled over, it's going to be more opaque, right? Here's the sheer, here's it doubled over. So I'm gonna go in here in these sections where you see the back of the dress and the sides of the dress doubled over, where it's not blocked by skin or the underdress. You're gonna see that be more opaque. And now at this point, it just looks like a cute little sheer dress. Now we're going to add the lace pattern. So remember, we are scaling this down and simplifying the elements using the eight foot rule. I'm going to use a really delicate pencil because this is a very delicate design and I don't want a lot of really heavy lines to get in the way of that. So this is my 0.3 size Muji pencil in HB, the one I use a lot for croaky underdrawings, super delicate. And I'm going to scale the pattern. Like this is an adult hand and it fits the oval. You know, with this croaky, the palm is here, the hand, it's probably about this big, but this is a small child's hand. So I'm going to say the oval is about this big. So I'm going to say that that is the size of one oval. Okay. When you look at an oval, it's got a ring inside. It's got a flower in here and it's got these fleur de lady lady blee, lady blee, thingies sticking up on the top <laughs> okay. and they are next to each other they're not staggered they're sitting exactly next to each other joined by this little flower in here and then you have all these flowers in here okay and so you're gonna parse that out And then I'm going to take my lace color again and I'm going to fill in these areas because yeah, these areas are more opaque. Actually, I made a mistake there. It's the flowers that are more opaque, excuse me. And then the center flower is more opaque and then these little flowers. We have all these little designs in here. And then this cluster of flowers on the top and this little flower and this little flower like so. And then again, I'm going to have this little dealio bopper and I'm gonna have another oval. And there are these flowers that happen here. And then I'm gonna have another dealio bopper and then another flower in here. Now with this, if I'm trying to make the skin color show through 
these holes like it would look like this, what I would do is I would put in, you know, and then I would take a color pencil, the similar to my skin tone, I chose a Prismacolor Sienna Brown, and then I would go in and draw in the spaces surrounding so that it looks like the skin color is showing through, All right? Because this ring is so much more sheer and this is a little bit more sheer than that so that you really see the skin color coming through the lace. But of course, you're gonna take your time, you're gonna really pay attention to your pattern and follow it precisely. When you're painting lace, whether it is opaque flowers with large holes or the sheer, you're going to paint everything that goes under the lace, whether it's skin or other fabric. And then you're going to let that dry 317%. And then you're going to layer the lace on top. So I have my drawing here. I have drawn this t-shirt for my lace. And I've drawn the body underneath it because I'm obviously I'm not going to take the skin tone all the way to the edge of the t-shirt, just where her body is. If you don't understand where I'm placing my shadows, you should watch my how to make figures look 3D with shadows video. And I'll drop the link below. All right, so I painted this. I'm gonna let I'm gonna set this aside to dry while I do other parts of the demo. This is dry, so I'm just going to go ahead and add the shadow to the skirt. Now, when it comes to putting lighter colors on top of darker colors that you know that 99% of the time I reach for my gouache. And this is no different. You're going to take opaque white gouache and you're going to paint all these little flowers, these white flowers on top of whatever, on top of skin, on top of you know different color skirts and shirts and whatnot. When you use opaque gouache like this, you can, you're not going to use a whole lot of water. And so you can do this on different papers. You know, I've done renderings where I will do everything here in marker, and then I'll just take a small brush and some white opaque wash and just put that right on top of marker paper because there's so little water, it's not going to affect the paper so much. 
Okay, you only really need watercolor paper when you are going to be using a lot of water and you need the paper to be receptive to that water. You have a row of leaves and you have a row of flowers, double, 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 and another row of leaves, double, 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 and another row of flowers, double, double, double. Ah, huh, okay. See, parse it out. So within one palm, we have the upper row of leaves and the bottom row, and then a row of of flowers in between. The lace, the selvage actually sits like this. And so your leaves are going upside down. Okay, so let's try this again. Our palm is about yay big. Our leaves are sitting like that. Our flowers are sitting like that. And then we have another row of leaves like this and it's going in this direction. Wonderful. All right, so we know that the selvage is going this way, and so I'm going to just lightly draw in some leaves, and then I'm going to draw in my little flowers, and then I'm gonna draw another row of dancing leaves. And that's about the same scale width-wise as this. Don't agonize over the prettiest underdrawing in the world. You're covering it up with opaque gouache in a second. Did you watch my interview with Brianna Kranz where we talked about gouache and watercolor and all that good stuff? Okay, remember when we were talking about how gouache should be the consistency of melted ice cream or opaque gouache should be? Did you guys watch my second sequence tutorial when I was talking about gouache and how you don't want to how you want the consistency to be like water droplets so that it's falling and it's opaque, but it's still watery, that you can work with it, you know, that kind of thing. If you find that you have gotten too sheer, just go back in with a little bit more opaque wash don't freak out. Mistakes happen. You're going to fix them. And remember what Brianna said, you have a bad drawing day, you got to power through it. Mistakes are part of her work. You just got to roll with it. And remember, at eight feet, you're not going to see every little petal. You're just going to see this kind of more intricate pattern happening. You're like, Zoe, what do I do in this white space? Now I can't see my lace. I'm going to draw it. Do you see how this white lace looks over the white paper? The shadows created make it look like there's a dark outline. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my super delicate white pen, my super delicate pencil, and I'm going to draw the little pieces so that I kind of pick up right where we left off. And then I'm going to take a white gel pen and I'm going to drop in my mesh. They are random and heavy and widely spaced.
So quick review, pay attention to your swatch. Look at your swatch and select your colors and the medium that you think are, is going to render your lace the best. You're going to look at whether the flower design is opaque or sheer. You're going to look at the overall fabric and see if you just have a wide mesh that creates clear holes or you're going to have such fine mesh that it looks like just like a sheer overall fabric. Now, sometimes I will drop in a mesh that looks like really soft cross hatching, something like this. I will actually go in and just put in little fat marks. Sometimes the mesh is really fine. And so like in the first lace we did, we just kind of went all over so that it just looks like a fine, light sheer. Okay, so pick your mesh, draw your design, and then follow the sheer principles when you're rendering your overall fabric. You know, render everything that's underneath your lace first. Let everything dry before you render your lace on top. When you're drawing out your lace, keep in mind the principles of print fabrics where you lay down the pattern according to your grain line, you scale down your fabric using the palm of your hand, and you follow the eight foot rule by squinting your eyes and throwing your fabric away from you so that you are drawing really the most important parts of your fabric instead of trying to over render every teeny tiny little thing. Number one rule. Look at your swatch. What is your swatch doing? What is going on there? And, you know, I hate it when students come to class and they bring me a swatch and the swatch is like this big. I'm like, how do you design with that? How do you look at that? How do you put that on a mannequin and drape with that? You know, I teach drawing, I teach illustration, and that is what I do and that is what I enjoy. But as a designer, you constantly have to be thinking about your fabric, how it works on the body. And so I can't stand to design just working off a tiny swatch like this. Go get half a yard, put it on a mannequin, put it on yourself, see how it drapes. And then you can also see the repeating pattern and how to put that down on your body, on your sketch. Again, let me remind you, lace is a complicated thing. So if you don't get it on the first try, that's fine. What are you gonna do? You're gonna try again. That's what you're gonna do. That's right. As usual, if you have a question, check the info box. If it's not there, leave me a comment. Hashtag always be practicing. I believe the next texture rendering video is going to be about feathers. Don't quote me. I have a cue, but I think the next one is feathers. So hit the subscribe button if you want an alert for when that pops up. And I will see you next time.